Welcome everyone. Hi first graders. It's time again for our lesson and it is the first grade faith first book and it's our holy time with our Lord and learning of our Catholic faith. Chapter 16. Hello. I'm ready to go. How about you, Mrs. Stever? I am Father Barry. Great. So what's the page number? Page number is um, 141. Oh, good. So I, I'm going to guess they have already opened their books, right? Right. Chapter 16. All right. What, what, what are we going to cover this time? We live as a family. Oh, great. Yeah. So I like that. That's a nice one. All right. So can you lead us in the prayer this time? Yes. So boys and girls, let's all pray. It says, we pray in blue, God, God Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, bless our families. families. Amen. So it begins, as we're even looking at that beautiful picture of a family together, it looks like they're on a bench in a park enjoying each other and laughing. But the question is, what blessing would you like God to give your family? So, do you have anything, Father Barry, on what you would like God to well, give? you may think I'm wishing for a million dollars. But no, something's yeah. more important than that. Okay. I pray that we can all love God throughout our whole life, and that we can be close to each other, and that we can get into heaven together. That's my prayer. And another little one along the way, I pray for good health. Yeah. I pray for people to be healthy because it's awful when you're sick. Right. You know, although you're usually a family member is there to help you, right? Right. When you're sick, to give some help to you and care. But that's what I think blessing I would give to them. Yeah, I'm very similar. I kind of thought strong faith, like you said, pray together, good health, and even that we stay together sometimes when families start to grow and and God's journeyed them into different locations in their lives. It's hard to stay together or be together. So I pray that God will bless us to just be a family, stay as a family. You know, that's yeah. that's important. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right. Let's uh let's say okay, it so say it says there? we belong to a family. Our family is a blessing from God. Our family helps us to grow as children of God. Ah, and I'm I'm going to guess that's a family sitting on the park bench. Mm -hmm. I wonder what they're planning to do there. They sure do look happy, though, don't they? They're yeah. all smiling. And... They're just sitting outside. The good thing it's not snowing out or no. a blizzard or something. No, weather's nice. They're it's a nice it. time. Maybe they live in San Diego. It's always nice that's there. That's true. That's true. They're not the they're not living up in the top of Canada because they right. wouldn't be put their short sleeves on. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So it says, how does your family help you to grow as a child of God? So think, how many people are in your family? Who do you live with? Your parents? Do you have siblings? Do your grandparents or do you see your grandparents? Do you see aunts and uncles? How do they help you grow as a child of God? Do they take you to Mass? Do they help you pray? Do they help you get clothes or food or help you have fun, play board games, or just be with each other and laugh? Do they help you when you are sick? Are they there for you when it's like birthday or Christmas and Easter, those kind of things? How do they help you to still believe in God and know Jesus loves you? And help you grow as a child of God. You know, Mrs. Stever, with all the people that come to our classes or come to masses involved in our church, there's a lot of different types of families. There's a lot of a lot of people that are in families. Some there's just one child. Right. Sometimes there's like five. You know? Sure. Sometimes people are much older than their than their youngest uh, sister. And sometimes it's the other way around. Right, that's right. A little boy may look up and see a big sister already in high school. 
the families can be in many different shapes and sizes and types. That's right. Yeah, and the church family is like a family of families. It's like God has a family. He just sees the whole planet, right? <laughs> right. As his family, right? And then in church, when we get together with many families, he sees us as his family, uh, in a believing family. So, uh, do you like it when people come to churches with their families? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I really do enjoy seeing that. You get to see everybody there. I know it's busy, and sometimes schedules won't allow it, and sometimes parents have to work on weekends, and you can't see everyone, but I do really enjoy seeing the whole family coming to Mass, praying together, celebrating Eucharist for those that have received the yeah. sacrament, you know, and... I like it too. Yeah, it's really nice. I like the little tiny kids that come into church, yeah. not these big first graders. <laughs> I like them too, but I mean, those little tiny kids are That's pretty right. cute, you know, the when they come in. That's right. And sometimes I see the people looking at that big thing in our church when you first come in. Oh, you mean right there by the holy water font? Yeah, when you first come in, yes, it's a it's a big bird. There it is. <laughs> but it's not the big bird from television. This is no. a different kind of bird, right? Oh. It's beautiful. Yes, it is. Tell us about it. Well, this is a peacock, okay? okay. And it's a famous, a colorful bird that has very colorful wings. It's Why full of life. Why would we have it in the church, though? Because a peacock also is a symbol of resurrection. Okay. Uh, people would see this bird and they saw something beautiful and holy about it. And so they say, ah, resurrection is a peacock. So... When I came to the church, I said, let's put a peacock at the front door because it's the bird of the resurrection. And I've seen the peacock in other churches, like at St. Matthew's Cathedral. So it's a beautiful bird. So if you ever come in and see it, you're going to say, oh, that's the resurrection bird. Yeah. That's <laughs> new life. Wonderful. Yeah. New life and lots of colors of new life of being a child of the Lord. Okay, boys and girls, page 142, 142. And it's titled, Family Love. So turn the page. And now let's read it together. Faith focus. What that means is what are we going to learn in this chapter? And they're hoping we're going to learn how do our families help us to grow as children of God. And then the faith words, two words, matrimony. And that's the sacrament that Catholics celebrate when they get married, and then marriage. A marriage is the lifelong promise of a love made by a man and a woman to live as a family. Let's read it together, and then we'll look at the pictures at the bottom of the page. The gift of marriage. Sometimes a man and a woman love each other very much. They make a promise to love each other and to live as a family their whole lives. They get married. Catholics celebrate the sacrament of matrimony when they get married. A husband and a wife receive a wonderful gift from God in marriage. They receive the gift of children. They become parents. There are many different kinds of families. All families are called to love God and one another. They are to be signs of God's love in the world. Let's look at the picture at the bottom left corner. And that actually looks really fun, doesn't it? It looks like that could probably be a father and their daughter. The father is handicapped. And he's given a ride to maybe the daughter and they're enjoying each other. And now look at the middle picture. Isn't that just a wonderful time? I always enjoy when you're able to be as a family and eat together, laugh together. Sometimes you don't like the same food the other person likes, but you're all together and you're enjoying just the abundance of food and being blessed that you have food to just be on a table and you're having fun. And then I also am enjoying that bottom right picture. Have you done this before? Maybe with ducks or geese or other birds and you're allowed to give them some food. So you go with either a parent or your older sibling if you have one or a grandparent takes you and 
sometimes it's all just called the duck pond or you just go down and you're able to give them some food and they really enjoy it. So when you connect all three pictures, it says, how are they showing God's love? And through God's love, it's that God's showing us to enjoy each other, be with each other, be a part of family through anything, the joys and the sadness and the beauty, but you're with each other during meals, during fun, and even helping if someone happens to have some type of a special physical need, you're there together and God blesses you. Father Barry, how about we go to page 143 and learn about families and helping one another. Well, this uh, book has a lot of nice pictures in it, so families help one another. That looks like family at the beach. Okay, at the beach. I don't know where they are. Maybe off the Gulf of Mexico down in Texas. I've been at the beach down there. That could be where they are. I don't know. But maybe you've been to the beach. You know what happens when you go to the beach? People have to carry stuff. The kids have to carry those buckets and the, see the dump truck the kid has. You have to, someone has to carry that. Okay, someone has to carry the, the cooler where you have the sandwiches and the drinks. Someone might have to carry the seats, okay, if you're going to sit, or a blanket. If you're going to have a beach umbrella, which they don't have, you're going to need to carry it. Families help one another, especially at the beach, you know. So let's see what this says here. A family is a blessing from God. Families are a sign of God's love. Christian families are a sign of Jesus' love for his followers. Members of a family share their love with God and with one another. Are you reading that with me, boys and girls? They pray together. They respect one another. They say and do kind things for one another. They take care of one another. They honor each other as children of God. So families help one another. Yes, uh, and I remember a time when uh, I was with a family and we were at the beach. And we were in uh, New Jersey at a beach. And it was very nice there. The water was very calm. Most of the time at the ocean it's not. It's kind of rough, but it was a very calm beach. And we also were playing football on the beach. And, and uh, the family had a lot of kids. And so the youngest one, he was upset that he couldn't throw the football because the football was almost bigger than him. <laughs> he was like about four, four and a half years old or something, but he was a little guy. And uh, so we were throwing the football. Well, his dad and I were showing off about how far we could throw it. So I got further and further apart. Further and further apart, we kept throwing the ball. 10 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards. And then all of a sudden we noticed that the little boy was missing. That as we kept moving apart, he would move with us, but we weren't paying attention to him. And he wandered off. His dad was wearing a red bathing suit and another person with a red bathing suit went by and he followed that man. He followed him all the way down the beach and he walked behind him for about 10 or 15 minutes thinking it was his dad. And he was just following his dad. It wasn't his dad. <laughs> So you know what, Our fa the family and myself, because I was the godfather of the boy, we went into a team and we said, let's find him, let's find Kyle, where is he, okay? So I said, I'll look in the ocean, but I don't think he's there because several of his sisters were in there, they would have saw him. Maybe he walked over to the boardwalk, maybe he walked that away, maybe he walked that away. So we worked as a team and then we found him. He was just, uh, standing around <laughs> next to a guy in a red bathing suit and the man in the red bathing suit had walked up to a lifeguard station and say hey, this little kid's been following me around you know who he is so the lifeguards also helped out sometimes you get all kinds of help so anyway we found him and he wasn't even worried because he didn't know he was lost <laughs> it was we the adults that were lost you know so as you look in the book you can see other kinds of families there and there was a famous family, uh, the Setons, and the mother was Elizabeth, and she was a family, uh, she had a family that lived here in Maryland, and she was not only the mom, but she also became a saint, one of Maryland saints. Sometimes some people in your family are so good or so holy, 
so loving, so special. So that's why her name is at the top of the page, okay? At the bottom is the name of your family. You gotta write it in, my family name. Do you know what your last name is? That's your family name, okay? So I'd like you to look down there at the bottom of the page and get a marker or crayon, a pencil, something, and draw it in there, your name. And I'm gonna draw it too at the same time with you. We're gonna do it really slowly so that we all have enough time to do this. All right, go ahead and, and write it. You can do it in big or small letters. Right where it says my family name, right? Okay, you have to write their name. I've been writing this since I was your age. I always had a hard time writing the two R's in a row. <laughs> so you're gonna find out my name has two R's in it. I'm gonna write the first letter. Maybe you can write the first letter, okay? That's the first letter, my name. My last name, it starts with a B. What does yours start with? Put it in there. Okay, I'm ready for the next letter. I hope you are too. Here we go. Can you see what that is? That's an A. Oops, I made a little mistake. I turned it into a Q. Pay no attention to this part here. Pay no attention to that. It's an A. <laughs> it slipped. It slipped in my hands. It's not a Q, otherwise my name would be hard to say. Okay, the third letter in my name, it starts with a, this thing, it goes like that. Mine is an R, what's yours? What's the next letter in your name? All right. This is where I, I always had trouble. Can I do an R again like that? I can. My name has two R's in it. Okay, I'm gonna fix this a little bit. There we go. I only have one letter left, but your name might be longer. Your name might be um, Abernathy or Rumpelstiltskin or something. If it is, it's going to take you, it doesn't matter you fit it on the page. Do you have a long name? That's harder to write. My name only has five letters. This is the last letter. Why? Why? Because it's a Y. That's why. See, my name is Barry. That's why they call me Father Barry. Right? And it's not Father Picuri. It's not a Q. Okay? Are you sure about that? Yes. All right, now you have to finish writing your name. Can you fit it in there? I'm going to give you 10 more seconds 10,000, 9,000, 8,000, 7,000, 6,000, 5,000, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's look at the top of the page. You still might be writing, but I'm going to read it. Uh, members of a family share their love with God and with one another. They pray together. You see that? So there's, oh yeah, I read that to you. Do you see that couple there on the right? You know, so they're out in the cornfield. He's wearing overalls. The man is overalls. They're out in the cornfield. So they're out in Nebraska somewhere. So we have someone at the beach in Texas and we have someone in Nebraska. Far away places, but families live everywhere. Okay. Okay, boys and girls, that's fun when you see your last name there. Turn the page on 144, the very next page. We're gonna to read together, but before we begin to read, Let's look at this beautiful, and it's called stained glass art picture, and it says the Holy Family. Now, do you know who the Holy Family is? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. 
And Jesus there looks like Jesus almost is your age. He looks like he's probably a first grader right there. And it's just a beautiful picture of the Holy Family. Jesus' family is called the Holy Family. And so his parents are Mary and Joseph. Okay, let's begin. God's family. Each family is a part of God's family. Our family helps us to grow in faith. Our family helps us to grow as Catholics. Our family teaches us about the Holy Family. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus are the Holy Family. Our family teaches us about the saints. Our family helps us to live our faith. It teaches us how to be a part of our church family. Our family teaches us to pray and to care for others as Jesus did. Just take your pencil or your crayon and let's check the ways a family can help one another grow in faith and live as children of God. So pray as a family each day, absolutely check that off. Whenever you can say a prayer together with your family, pray together. Read the Bible together. Even though you're in first grade, your parents could be reading parts of the Bible. There's children's Bibles. Check that off. And go to church. That's important because we're learning about our church family. And you get to know people when you go to church and do different things at the church. So go to resurrection and go to mass. Go to church. Check that off. And then share another thing a family can do. Just write something down or this week when you're talking to your family, share something that they can do. So Father Barry, let's do the next page, how our church can make a difference. Helping families. Page 145. Holy Family Day Home was started by the Sisters of the Holy Family. So they're religious sisters started something called Holy Family Day Home. It is a place for children of parents who both need to work. If they both need to work, somebody, who's going to watch the little guy? Who's going to watch the girl at home? Holy Family Day Home will. It is a place for young children young children to learn to respect themselves and others. The children play and learn during the day. Holy Family Day Home helps families to grow stronger. So there's some children hanging out. Maybe you've been in a daycare or in a pre-K program or something, hanging out with other boys and girls, but someone else is watching you, right? And, and so you're being taken care of, okay? So sometimes everybody pitches in to help families and to help people, right? So, uh, our, our question at the bottom, and then we'll show the picture of those kids. What are some things you do with your family that show respect for one another? So, I mean, kids can, you know, play together, read together, you know, have their snack time together, you know, just, and I don't know what they're doing there, but, you know, the whole idea is that they're, they're, taking care of each other because we're part of the human family you know we all are human beings and we have to like act like we're all God's children right and so I know that one of the things I used to see my sisters do is they would have the, some people come over and they would be like together doing something in the backyard or or inside somewhere and they were like you know, so some people felt like a member of our family. We had some people come over so much almost every day. It was almost like I had a new sister, <laughs> you know. But that's because they felt comfortable coming over, and so did their parents. And, of course, sometimes my sisters would be gone, and they'd be across the street over in those people's house, you know. So that's how families can help each other. Okay, we're on page 146. What difference does faith make in my life? You are a part of a family. The Holy Spirit 
helps you to share God's love with the members of your family. Have you ever had to sign language? Or maybe you do sign language? This activity, we're going to do sign language together. It says, learn to sign these words. Teach the signs to your family. That'll be fun. Share God's love with one another. So it says, sharing family love. And we're going to sign with our hand the word God, the word loves, and the word you. Okay, I'm going to be looking at the book while I also do it. So, first sign, okay, for a G, when you're doing sign language, just put your finger like that. So, G, and of course, O, I think it's pretty o easy. You just do an O. You've probably done that even when you say, okay, to someone, O. And then a, a D, you put your fingers like this and your finger up. So, that's G-O-D. And then love, of course, I think everybody knows that one in the first L. L, O, and then V, and then E is a little different. You put your hand, fingers down, but then you just kind of put your thumb underneath. So that's an E. And then the S is almost the same as an E because then you grab your fingers. See how it shows you? So that's loves. And then we're going to finish it off by... Sometimes this is almost like a hang. Like if you're down at the beach, you go hang, surfing, and then an O. And then you finish it with the letter U, and it's U, and you just put your fingers together. Any of you Cub Scouts? You probably have done this already in first grade as a Cub Scout. I know that's a symbol, but it's also a sign language symbol for you. So how beautiful. God loves you. And your faith choice, it says, I will share God's love with a member of my family, and I will sign the message I learned. So you're going to have to practice. So when you take this chapter, take your book, and just take the page and really practice, and it's a beautiful message. God loves you, and you can surprise your family by just sign language in that. All right, Smiley Face gives you two thumbs up for sharing family love. God loves you. Now it's time to do our family blessing. It's going to be a part of Leader with Mrs. Stever, and I'll do the all part with you, okay? I'm ready to pray with you all. Okay. A family blessing. It is important to pray for our families. Let us ask God to bless the members of our families. So I'm going to lead the prayer. This is a prayer. And then you and Father Barry will answer when it says all, A-L-L, -L, okay? Lord God, show your wonderful love to all our families. Bless our grandparents. We ask you, Lord. Bless our parents. We ask you, Lord. Bless, and now you're going to say the names quietly in your heart. So I'll say them quietly, not out loud. You say them, and Father Barry, on who in your family you want to bless. And then I'm going to give you a minute. And then you and Father Barry will end the prayer by answering. Okay. We ask you, Lord. So that's beautiful. That was a nice family prayer. Now let's look at the bottom of the page. We remember. This looks like it might also be fun. You're going to write a poem. Finish it. It says, read this poem. Fill in the blanks with a rhyming word. This sounds like fun. Families, families everywhere. Show each other love and 
No, not underwear. No, no. I right? hope not. Nope. Show each other love and care. Oh, yeah. You that think that would be with, good? That yeah. rhymes with where. With, yeah. Where, Everywhere care. care. I, I get it. Or each other love and we share. Something like that. But okay. And then how about they tell us of God's love you see. God loves each of you. Each of us. us. Each of us. You and me. Oh, yeah. It rhymes with C. Right. What do you think? Sound good? Yeah, that's the correct one. Yeah. You might have different words that rhyme, too. That would fit there perfectly. But that's at least two suggestions. And then it has you to help you remember Christian families are signs of Jesus' love for his followers. Members of a family share their love. For God with one another. Our family helps us to live our faith. So let's turn the page and get one of your parents to come and help you with this page. Because as always, this is now chapter 16. And it's the page where we want to have your parents read and we'll talk with them. Okay, so parents, read the page thoroughly. I'm just going to kind of skim over it real quick and tell you what the page is. Beautiful picture at the bottom left. My goodness, this family looks so happy. They've been blessed with beautiful children, mom and dad, and nice time. But it tells you in sharing God's word, read together the Bible story in Luke. And then emphasize that in the Holy Family... Jesus grew in love for God and for his family. And praying, you learn a blessing prayer for a family. And it was really a beautiful prayer, very quick prayer that you could do as a family. Pray for each other quietly. And that's on page 147. And they make a difference. Each week they give you some suggestions. And maybe you have one yourself, just knowing how your family's life is this upcoming week. But I highlight family members help one another grow in faith. They encourage and support one another to live as Jesus taught. Share with one another how you help each other grow in faith. So it might be just a nice time to have a discussion together and remind each other about how you're each helping each other grow as a family in your Catholic faith. So this week, you know, when you're eating together or in the carpool together or somewhere, Maybe just kind of talk about those things and just kind of revisit that. Okay, I'm going to close with the prayer. And the prayer, I think, would be perfect to go back to a page, boys and girls, on sharing family love, so your sign language. Uh, Mrs. Stever, you can do now what I just showed on the page. You can do it. I'm a little afraid I can't do it. Okay. I'm not confident. Okay. So I'm just going to leave my hat over there with my name on it. Okay. You can, I'll, I'll join in after you do, do your thing, okay? Okay. So, boys and girls, you did your faith choice and said you're going to do this this week. So why don't we do that beautiful prayer that's sign language, and we're going to do it together, okay? It's called sharing family love. So you ready? So the G is like this, okay? So G, and then you go O, and then the D is putting your fingers and one like that, so that's a D, so that's God. Now loves is L, and then an O, and V, and then remember the E, and then S. And that's loves. And then you is kind of great, like that. You, Y, the Y, and then O. And now you is like that. So it's God loves you. You did it. 
So practice it because you're going to do it this week and show someone and then they'll know how to do it. God loves you. That was great. I chickened out. <laughs> That's okay. They probably got it. <clears throat> I should have got it too. So it's uh, time to go. And I, you know, at the earlier in the lesson, do you remember we wrote our last name out? Yes. Of our family name? Yep. Well, that's my family name right there, Barry, and it's on a hat. So I have a hat with my name on it. That's really awesome. Okay, so I'm going to put it on. Okay. Got a quick question. Yeah. Okay, I got Barry, and that's really, really cool. Yeah. what's the symbol? Oh, yeah, the symbol. It's a, a shamrock. Oh. That's a little Irish, uh, the little Irish plant. Okay. And everybody knows that it's from Ireland and that we're from Ireland. Our family comes from there long ago. That's really great. Green hat, of course, you know? Yeah, that's so, great. So Barry starts with a B and so does. Bye-bye. God bless you. <laughs> Enjoy your week.